Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and welcome to a little bit of a rainy day where we are actually tasked with removing and rescuing a vehicle from a nearby river. Now, this is a new vehicle, and for whatever reason, someone has decided that this was a good idea to convert into a off-roader. Now, you'll know what it is either by the title, or maybe the thumbnail, or maybe when you see it for the first time, but um, they did make four-wheel drive versions versions of these, and several people have actually turned these into full-on trail rigs and rock crawlers in real life by swapping one-ton axles underneath them, and if that's what you're interested in, or you just like quirky vans, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint with that one, uh, then you are definitely going to want to potentially add this vehicle to your garage, but let's go ahead and head over to the river, and we'll rescue this thing. We've got beans power today, and we're firing up the truck. And we'll get it out there. Let's see. All right. So pulling out of the garage, you can see it. We're in the Peterman 3790 right now. We've got the uh, the tow truck bed on the back. And this thing actually has some really interesting features if you haven't actually messed around with it before. So I highly recommend giving this thing a try. So there is the vehicle that needs to be rescued. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to pull in and we're going to probably try to get it up onto, up onto the rollback pretty quickly. My only thing is, is it going to be tricky to do it right here? It might actually not be. It might be, it might be pretty simple. All right, so let's put you right there. I, did, I, why did I think that the quick winch was going to go to the back of the van? Why did I think that, huh? Why did I think that? I, I should have known it was going to go to everything but the vehicle I was trying to winch to. All right, so we're getting you out of the water. Almost there. All right, there you go. Now we're going to go ahead and kind of align this guy with the back of the van. And we'll move you just a... Whoa, that's too much. That's way too much. All right, that's like close enough-ish. All right, so we're going to control the rollback. And this is the cool thing is basically it's all quick controls. So when you're using this with the quick controls, you could pretty much... You could literally pretty much like line it up however you want and you could do it super fast. All right, so let's ease you down. Almost there. Is that going to do it? There we go. Now it's in the ground. Okay. I was going to say, is that going to do it? I'm going to roll the truck just a little bit further back. Should be fine there. Alrighty. Now it's time to go ahead and winch this thing up here. Now you're actually moving, but the thing is... Now, okay, so it's moving, but it's still... It's actually still really frustrating because it's not actually coming up on the rollback for some reason. Dude, you are ridiculous. All right. All right. New plan. And we're going to drop you off at the garage. And then we're finally going to be able to go through our new, well, Astro Van. Console-friendly Astro Van, by the way. All right. Let's swap over to the Heritage Luna 4x4. Now, very recognizable from the front end. And also, if you notice, the doors do not match. The paint does not match. But you know what? Kind of fits the idea that he pulled this out of the junkyard. So let's go ahead and go straight into the customization. So we've got the, let's see, we've got the 5.8, the 6.2, and the 6.2T. And that's definitely what we're going to go with. What's interesting about this is the top engine really only gets you to an S power to weight rating. It's not an S plus or anything like that. So those of you that are actually uh, really interested in a modded scout that might be a little bit more game balance friendly could definitely, uh, definitely experiment around with this thing. Oh, definitely going to go with the Crawler Box Scout Gen 3. And let's see. Whoa, the tuned custom suspension is actually... <laughs> that's actually a pretty decent amount of lift. I'm not even going to like... Not even going to tiptoe around that. That is a pretty decent amount of lift for a van like this. Apparently, if you want to do a set of highway dualies, you can totally do that. I don't know if I would do that, but you can totally do that. You actually have the Scout variant of the MMR Shielder in 30 and 33... I gotta say, 33s normally don't look big on anything in this game. They look big on this. They, dude, he's got so many dually options. Wait a minute. Quasi's monster mud tires? Oh my god, that's amazing. You can legitimately build a kind of a monster van if you want. Now, when I say a monster van, I don't necessarily mean like, you know, in terms of like a monster truck, but 
You could build, like, literally a van on ultra-wide steamroller mud tires, basically. That is freaking amazing, and I love every bit of it. The only thing is, we're definitely going to deal with some fender rub. I am 100% sure of that. I am 110% sure of that. That is, that is so unnecessary, and it's wonderful. I love that. That is so freaking unnecessary. Oh my god. All right. So let's see, we've got the trunk repair supplies we can put in the back, spare wheel up top, trunk repair supplies again, and another spare wheel we can put in the back. So if you want to really outfit this thing for campaign scout usage, you totally could. Now, rooftop wise, let's see, uh, angled with beacons, but it doesn't go all the way across the windshield. That's kind of weird. Now, lighting wise, so let's see, bar mounted fog lights, I actually really dig those. LED fogs up top, round beacon, which I don't really feel like I need that. Let's see, tall mounted beacon on the side, we've got a flasher bar, and a searchlight. So basically, every single, uh, like, kind of, I wouldn't say projector light, but basically, you know, I mean, adventure style light. We could put a bull bar on the front if we really wanted to, and Quasi's beadlocks for the monster mud tires, and you could pretty much go with whatever color you want. The only thing is, uh, when you get into certain colors, it seems as though the only color that changes is, like, Oh, that's weird. Like the bumpers. Oh, that's super strange. So the colors on the left don't always correspond with the colors on the vehicle. But like, it's kind of one of those things where you'll figure it out as you go along. And he may end up updating that. So definitely going to throw beans on the dash. And now it's time to take our off-road Astro van for a rip and see what it can do. Now, that Gen 3 crawler box, by the way, is an 8-speed in automatic mode, but also a variable low range. So, it pretty much allows you to do, like, basically everything. Like, literally, you can adapt this thing to any situation. You got your standard assortment of four scout trailers, and now it's time to take this thing out for some obstacles. Now, the interior view is definitely, I mean... It's uh, not necessarily where I would choose to spend a lot of my uh, interior view gameplay, but you know it is there. If you guys are if you guys are interested in spending a lot of time in the interior, you can if you choose. Now it's actually really entertaining to me to drive this like super boxy style van along in SnowRunner, and I'm not sure why, but like there's a certain amount of charm that these super boxy vans have always had, especially when you convert them into something off-road oriented or off-road ready, but really at the end of the day, there is such a culture around these like boxy styled vans of people that convert them into, you know, whatever you want, like campers or off-roaders or, and did I just not make it up that hill? What the heck? And this thing is diff lock always on too. Okay, I think it's because I lifted off the throttle at the wrong time. I was like, that is not normal and that's really, really weird. The fact that it didn't want to make it up that hill, I'm like... That is not normal, especially for a Max Mike 181 truck. Like, that is super weird. All right, let's see how it does in the... Bruh. These pebbles be like, nope, you're not getting through here without any damage. All right, we're going to see how it does on the rocks. Now, I'm not sure how it's going to do with these ultra-wide steamroller-style tires, but it should do at least okay-ish. Come on. Oh, are you really going to get stuck, like, right there? All right. That's a bit annoying. Dude, seriously? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Oh, it was right there. Oh, yep, there it is. There it is. Bump it up to low plus. Wow, it really does not like low plus right here. It's like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. We are not doing that. Yeah, no, you have to drive it. If you're going to drive it on the rocks, apparently it likes to be below low plus. Low plus is apparently too much wheel speed. Now, I'm sure that low plus has a use. I'm sure it's good for something, but this particular rock obstacle is not what low plus is good for. Definitely not. Well, let me see if I can get a better angle at this. It's not really wanting to make it up the, uh, the normal rock climb that we usually do, and I don't know if that's more the tires or just like something getting caught. It doesn't want to get up that ledge. Maybe it's just not a very rock-oriented vehicle. And I was kind of hoping it would be a little bit better on the rocks, but, like, I may have been proven wrong on that one. Okay, well, I guess we're going to roll our way backwards. I said roll our way backwards. Like, come on, bud. Beauty of it is we can still be in automatic mode on the rocks because the diff lock is always on. 
The only problem with that is the fact that I'm trying to turn off of these rocks, and it's like, ha, yeah, you thought you could do that? Yeah, no, we're not doing that today. And I'm like, okay, fair. Uh, that's apparently just not the way. It's like, I will show you the way, and this is not the way. All right, we're gonna have to make our way down to this very awkward, like, Oh, well, it's actually not as awkward as I thought it was going to be. Normally, when you try to drive vehicles down through that little break in the rocks, they're usually like, no, we're not going this way. We're not doing this. We are not interested. Although, now looking at the roof of this thing, I've just had an idea. I wonder if you could pack Dubs' Outlander on the roof of the van. That would be like the weirdest freaking thing, but I feel like it would work. Now, oh, wait a minute. Why did I go to spawn a new vehicle? I didn't realize I had an offline winch. Maybe I just need to be more, uh, like, more cognizant of the fact that I have an offline winch in this thing. It does flip itself over very easily, but again, I think that's, once again, because of the ultra boxy design. Alright, so let's see how you do in some proper mud. Now, I may want to switch off of these ultra-wide tires because I feel like they may be causing some issues. And let's see, so what tires are we on right now? So that's, oh no, those are studded tires. Okay, we're going to need to find the mud tires, mud tires, mud singles. That's it, the mud singles. Since they're basically the same compound, but they're a lot narrower, they should do a much better job in the mud. Because as we discovered a long time ago, this game's physics system seems to largely favor narrower tires in deeper mud. So, and I'm not sure why that is, but it really does not like super, like, wide tires or ultra-wide tires in a, like, in a deep, muddy situation. It's like, nope, we're not doing that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, I thought that it was gonna get farther than that, but apparently the, uh... Apparently, the answer to that is get the L400 and pull it out immediately because it's not going very far. All right, come with me. Wow, the L400 or 2017 L400 did a, a more effective recovery job than the, uh, <laughs> than the rollback did earlier. But then again, that was also kind of due to me not being completely sure what the best angle to approach this thing with the rollback was going to be. So I completely understand where there could have been a bit of an issue there. All right, so the dips obstacle now. The dips obstacle shouldn't be too bad. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do it in automatic mode because the diff lock is always on. So there's really no reason to not do it in automatic mode unless you want that little bit of extra control that the low ranges can give you. So due to the short wheelbase... It goes through this just fine. I mean, it literally, like, it goes through this no problem at all. I say that as it starts to, like, bury its bumper in the ground. But we're not going to worry about that. We're not going to talk about that. That's going to be, like, just completely fine. It's all good. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Nope. Yep. Uh-oh. Almost there. This is definitely, the more I drive it, the more I can tell you that it was designed to drive kind of in kind of with that vanilla game balance in mind and you know some people are really really into that in terms of mods some people really do like you know when a modded vehicle drives very close to or very much like a standard in-game truck and if that's what you're looking for this might be a really good addition to your lineup so let's go ahead and change it to a much brighter sunnier day and make our way to the bridge jump the bridge jump is obviously at least in my opinion a very important test and I'm thinking it's probably going to, from what I saw it do earlier, driving off of the Rocky Hill, it's probably going to nose in really hard and just basically, like, basically dive completely onto the front end of the truck. I don't know if that's exactly what's going to happen, but, I mean, I'm kind of hoping that that's not what happens, but I also think that with a vehicle like this, it's pretty likely to just nose straight in. And, well, we're already in eighth gear. Let's go! Wait for it to pick up speed and put it in neutral. Let that speed continue to build. Almost there and fully set. Oh my god, it actually went backwards. It leaned backwards, hit the barrels so hard that it bounced, ended up with almost no damage at all, basically like a tiny bit of engine damage, and drove away just fine. Well, honestly, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to do as well. I just drove straight away from that. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.